Hey guys, it's Zero to Nine, and today we will talk a little bit about bit depths and dithering. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to show you a little graphic to really understand what bit depth actually is. I have stolen a graphic here from the internet and uh, just for representing what uh, bit depth really means. So here in this example, you can see on the left side, we have uh, audio signal in 16 bit uh, depth and 44K. And in the middle, we have a 24 bit uh, file with also the 44K sample rate. And uh, you can see that the bit depth is the kind of a number of steps here which we have to represent uh, the analog uh, waveform and uh, in theory um, with a higher bit depth uh, it's easier to represent uh, the real shape of the analog waveform and uh, with a lower bit rate uh, it's actually harder and what happens if you can't represent uh, the waveform correctly is that uh, the process will add uh, what we call quantization error or quantization noise and it's basically a noise which is added to the signal and so the main differences uh, between um, bit depths is uh, the noise floor and the dynamic range. For example, in 16-bit, uh, uh, the noise floor is at uh, minus uh, 96 uh, dB. So we have a dynamic range of 96 dB. And in 24-bit, um, the noise floor is at minus 144 dB. So we have a dynamic range of 144 dB, which is actually a lot. And um, so you also can see that it at a certain point it doesn't really make sense to use higher bit depths because uh, the signal to noise ratios are already so good uh, that it will not has any advantages to use more than 24 bit actually and uh, with that being said um, let's jump over to uh, another picture here uh, where we can see the noise floor which is added um, in certain bit depths. On the left side we can see we have two bits and um, there we can really see that it adds a lot of quantization noise here and um, when you raise the bit depth here to four bits and then to eight bits you will see that the noise floor gets reduced by a lot and as I already told you in 16 and 24 bits we have a, a very very low noise floor actually and um, it's basically very hard to uh, to hear it in a, a full audio file but um, due to the problem with the quantization noise um, some engineers came up with an idea uh, to kind of mask the noise and that's where dithering comes into play because dithering adds uh, some noise to mask the quantization noise which is introduced um, by the lower bit rate and uh, we will check it out how it works uh, so we'll jump over to Ableton to really see what it does so I've prepared a little project here and on the first channel we have just a basic sine wave playing <laughs> So you can see it's just a C4 note playing and it's a simple sine wave. So uh, it has just uh, one frequency and no harmonics. And now I will use uh, the redux um, effect for reducing the bit depth. And if you watch uh, the frequency analyzer, you will see what actually happens if I reduce the bit depth. Alright, and here you can uh, easily see what actually happens. So as I reduce the bit depth, uh, the noise floor will get louder and louder. And at 4 bit, uh, it sounds very shitty, it has a lot of um, kind of noisy uh, um, signal added to the original sine wave. And so it's very hard now to really hear the fundamental frequency or the original audio content. 
And the idea behind um, dithering is now um, to add a uh, white noise signal um, to kind of mask all this shitty content so that it's easier to hear the original content or the original sine wave in this case. Um, so I have here a second channel and I uh, will increase the volume of this white noise and uh, then you will see uh, how it really works and just listen to the uh, fundamental sine wave and uh, try to, to see how it behaves when I add the additional noise and how it sounds like. Okay, so that's basically what dithering does. It adds noise and if you listen closely, if I add the noise and it's a little bit easier to hear the fundamental frequency and you can hear it a little bit better. And of course, this is a very exaggerated um, example because I'm using 4-bit and uh, this adds a lot of quantization noise. And for, for example, in a real world uh, scenario with 16 or 24-bit, uh, of course, you have so a uh, little um, quantization noise um, that it will be of course different but i'm just using 4-bit here uh, to really uh, show uh, how it works so that it's easier to understand and of course with dithering you probably already heard that, that there are different like dithering algorithms and for example there are d uh, different noise shaping algorithms and basically what they do is um, they are using the white noise and then they're like shaping um, the white noise so that it has a little bit more volume in the upper frequencies and less volume in the lower frequencies and that's usually a little bit more pleasant to hear and uh, still has the same masking effect because usually the quantization noise is also in the higher frequency range and uh, to show you how this sounds i've just loaded up um, a proq3 instance here and like uh, the noise shaping is just for example here like reducing the the low frequencies and boosting the highs and that's like um, so that's the basic idea of noise shaping. There are different noise shaping algorithms and uh, each is a little bit different. And if you're really interested in that, you can look it up. But uh, for like basic understanding, uh, this is enough to really show what it's doing. So I will just uh, toggle uh, the FabFilter instance on and off so you can hear the difference uh, if we use uh, like kind of basic noise shaping here. Okay, so I hope uh, it's it's also uh, um, obvious for you what what happens here. So if I just uh, boost the highs and reduce the lows on the um, white noise signal, it gets a little bit more pleasant and not that uh, audible, and uh, it still has the same or probably even better masking effect for the quantization noise. So you can hear the original sine wave a little bit better. And uh, that's the basic idea behind it. Um, but as I already told you, in 16 and 24 bit, the noise floor is so low uh, that it's really uh, barely noticeable. And probably in 24 bit, it's absolutely impossible to hear. Um, especially in like uh, like dance music where the master files are really loud and crushed anyway we have a lot of distortion um, in our projects so it's probably impossible to hear quantization noise or the dithering noise in 24-bit for example and uh, that's why uh, I personally um, use just the basic uh, triangular algorithm for dithering when I bounce my audio to 24-bit uh, files in the final mastering process um, because it really doesn't matter uh, if you have a, a like 24-bit file it's uh, the noise floor is so quiet that it doesn't make any difference um, but uh, like um, talking about uh, bit depths in audio files um, you with dithering it's very important that you only dither once and 
uh, you dither in the final output process. So when you're mastering your track, um, then uh, you dither the final result or the final mastering file once and then um, send it to a distributor or a label if they don't do a, a separate master. And uh, so that's very important uh, to understand that the dithering uh, should only be done once in your final file and not uh, several times. And um, a lot of people uh, actually uh, don't know that. And for example, if you have a collaboration with a friend of you and you're sharing files back and forth, you're sending stamps, um, some people export stamps in 16-bit or in 24-bit and every time um, you're reducing the bit depth of your uh, DAW, um, which is always operating in at least 32-bit. Uh, um, you add quantization noise or dithering noise, if you use dithering uh, during the, the export, uh, to the audio file. And for example, if you're using stems, and uh, imagine you're sending stems back and forth with your color partner like 10 times, and you add quantization noise every time with every export. So it adds up a lot. And then in the final file, you have a lot of noise uh, or dirtying noise. And if you then send it to a mastering engineer and uh, he will boost up the track by another like 10 dB, um, the noise floor is really high. And um, so this reduces the quality of your sound uh, a lot. So uh, that's why I recommend um, for exporting files just to send it to someone else for example for like a, a mastering engineer or you send it to a friend and you export the stems or you just export the audio and um, and want to reuse it in another project uh, always use 32-bit um, floating point if possible for example in ableton if you select 32-bit it's floating point anyway so this is the highest possible quality there's absolutely no artifacts in it um, so you have really the highest possible quality and the only downside is that it loses uh, you lose a little bit of space on your hard disk because the files are bigger uh, but to be honest nowadays this isn't really a problem anymore um, also uh, like um, if you're uploading the files um, usually the internet speed is so high nowadays that it doesn't really matter and you can always uh, use compression or put it in an archive and upload it then to reduce the, um, the file size and so this isn't really a thing and that's why i would always recommend to stay in 32-bit as long as possible and only use a lower bit depth if you're outputting the final result and uh, to show this um, for you what happens if you don't do it do this and for example you're exporting in 16-bit all the time and um, we will just uh, try it out and see what happens um, I will exaggerate it a little bit and use a utility plugin here to reduce the volume by 35 bit. Let's say you yeah, have like a sample at very uh, low volume or you're producing at low volume with your friend and you then, uh, then just export the stems and send it to him and we will export it here in in 16 bit. So um, go to export 16 bit, triangular, dithering. Okay, save it. And I will load it up here again. Okay, and now we have the file here, exported the same sine wave in 16 bit. And uh, I use the utility plugin again to uh, to put it at a higher volume. So let's say after that you use a lot of saturation and limiting, compressing uh, on your complete mix. So you will add a lot of volume and, and this is then how the final result would look like. So you can easily see and hear that we have a, a very high noise floor and uh, this is, for example, the result if you're exporting in 16 bit and then you're increasing the volume. So you're increasing also the volume of the noise floor. And um, in a typical mastering situation, 
Um, I can guarantee you that the mastering engineer will probably boost um, the whole mix by 10 dB or even more, uh, depending on how loud you send the pre-master file. But um, if you use the, um, the minus 6 dB rule, which uh, is not really useful, but I will make another video about that so you can check it out. And But let's say you're exporting at minus 6 dB, uh, so your loudest uh, part in the song is minus 6 dB. Um, you, I can guarantee you that the mastering engineer will boost the file by at least 10 or maybe 15 dB probably um, to get it at the final uh, volume and uh, final loudness. And uh, now let's uh, just say you have exported in 16-bit, then you can uh, expect that at least the noise floor uh, will get louder by 10 or 15 dB. And now think about it, if you exported the file multiple times in 16-bit and also your friend exporting 16-bit and send it back, back to you, then you have uh, several dithering noise uh, stages here. And then you can really end up with something like um, this file I showed you here. And then you have audible noise in your audio files and that's definitely not what you want so that's why i recommend stay in 32-bit as long as possible for the highest quality and in most cases this is not a problem at all and the uh, bigger files um, are not a problem so yeah to wrap it up um, dithering is used to mask uh, the quantization noise, uh, which gets added if you're reducing the bit depth of a file and uh, use dithering only once for your final mastering file. And if you're sharing stems or you want to export the audio file um, to your library, then uh, you can use subdo bit um, to have the highest quality because then you don't need dithering at all. You only need dither when you're reducing the bit depth. So if you're staying in 32 bit, you don't need dithering. Yeah, I think that's all I can say. Um, if you like the video, you can press the like button. And if you like the content, you can also subscribe to my channel and I will upload uh, a lot more videos about like the technical stuff of producing and also how i produce so um yeah thanks for watching see you next time bye bye